Hey guys, welcome to Z Reviews Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the $400 Android Join Head Unit on your Jeep Wrangler. You're going to need four tools. You're going to need a plastic door removal tool, a screwdriver, a 7mm hex socket, as well as a pen knife, and about 80 minutes of your time. So let's get started. So the first step is to get your plastic panel removal tool, or if you don't have that, a flat hit screwdriver, and you're going to dig it into the top of your window control in order to pop it out. There's going to be this cable that's connected to the back of it. You're going to pull on the red tab to release the cable and then pull the cable out. It's going to be fairly difficult if it's your first time because you don't have a lot of space in there. Stick it in the back. Next step is to get your 7mm wrench and there's this little bolt right down here and you're going to remove that. Once you got this bolt removed, stick it in the cup holder. Next step is to go to your little tray on the top of your Wrangler, take that out, stick it in the back and there's going to be this little bolt and you're going to remove that. Same thing, stick it in the cup holder. The next step is you want to expose the two bolts that hold the dash in place. You're going to grab this spot and pull down on both sides of the steering wheel. Comes out pretty easily, stick it in the back. This will uncover two bolts, one on the left side and the other on the right side of the steering wheel. Get your 7mm and get those bolts out. Now it's time to remove the entire dash. What you're going to do is ensure your steering wheel is all the way down, lock it in place, and you're going to pull from this spot towards you and it comes out just like that. And it's actually going to get stuck on your windshield wiper thingy. So you just got to wiggle it and get it out and then stick it in the back. And now remove the four bolts that are holding the radio in. Final step, pull the radio out with muscle and unplug everything. Finally, remove the vents by pressing on this tab and then you rotate the vents clockwise and then you pop it out. Okay, once you're done that, let's start with unboxing the unit. Open it with your pen knife and also known as an X-Acto knife or box cutter. Cut it open. Yes, you will need the pen knife in the future. In terms of the major items you need to make sure you have, first is the left dash piece. The next part is the top dash piece and then finally the middle part of the dash. After you have all the dash pieces, next is the head unit without the screen of course. A box full of cables, we will go through that later and finally the actual screen. Now this is what I got in terms of cables and manuals. It might be a little bit different for you but first I, what I got here is a greeting card. Cool. And then I got an installation guide. Uh, which I read through it, doesn't help us Wrangler owners at all. And then an Android install guide that isn't important except for this page. You want to take a note of this password so that you can get into the factory settings 3368. Not sure if it's standard or not, but make sure that you look through the manual for that number. And then after this page, we have another useless, you know, Bluetooth pairing guide. And finally, the most important document is the connection diagram. All right, let's tuck all that away. And the next is the actual head unit. You can see that attached to it already is a SIM card slot, which you might or might not have. Two connectors to connect to the Jeep. One of them is for the Alpine unit and one of them is for the factory audio unit. Not sure which is which, but we'll find that out later. And then you have the CAN bus decoder that basically allows this unit to be plug and play, which it is. All right, the next things we have here is the radio adapter your GPS slash GLONASS antenna. And they also give you two USB cables and finally a microphone. Also, they gave me two 4G LTE antennas. Let's take a quick look at the back of the head unit. First, we have the 
ant connection which basically powers your radio antenna i'm pretty sure it's useless for this unit unless you have some sort of you know shortwave radio for off-road and then we have these nine connections which is basically if you don't have the alpine or the regular stereo speakers you have aftermarkets then you can connect this to your stereo speakers up to 7.1 surround i think next is the two usb connections the microphone connection and the radio connection and up there we have the gps connections and two LTE antenna connections that you can plug in as well. All right, the next thing I did was to wire the microphone. I stick it up here because that's where the factory uh, microphone is. And then after that, I tuck it behind the plastic and kind of pull it around the speedometer unit and then into the head unit area. The next thing we have to wire is gonna be harder, especially if you have big hands, as you have to thread the USB connectors and SIM card uh, connector into the glove box and it took me probably like eight minutes to do even though my hands are pretty tiny once you've done that the next step is to plug in four connections your gps your two usbs and the radio into your new head units finally um, you know after rearranging all the cables uh, you're going to plug it into the main connection again there's two one is for the alpine system and one is for the stock system unfortunately as far as i can tell they are not marked properly so what i had to do was plug both in and test to see if it worked with my alpine system and one of them actually did and i'll talk about that later all right next tuck in all the cables as it's going to be very packed back there all right the next step that you're going to do which i'm not going to actually show you is to test out three things before you put everything back in place you're going to test out the gps make sure that works the sound and finally you're going to test out the microphone and an easy way to test a microphone is just um, open something where you have to type and then go to the google speaking or google now and then start speaking and see if it works can you hear me once you've confirmed the major things work then you can continue with the video the next thing i did was to install the vents into the dash panels however this is where you start um, hitting a problem. Namely, these tabs here are way too high. So when you try and install your vents, um, you can't. So what you have to do is take your box cutter and cut these tabs down. And well, I tried that, it was taking way too long. So I took my dad's Dremel and I used that instead. Once you've grinded or ground all the tabs down or cut them off, then you install the vents and then continue with the video. Oh, the one thing I did not film is you have to screw the screen into the dash with four screws which are included in the package. Um, and after you do that, install the left dash which is the one with the speedometer and then move on to the middle part. And then you're going to plug the screen into the dash, push it into the dash holders and then snap the new dash in place. After which reinstall the miscellaneous stuff like the panel below the steering wheel, the window control and you're done. All right, now before we move on to the actual Android portion of the unit, I wanna talk about the fit of the new dash pieces. Um, if you look here, there's a gap of about two millimeters around this area, which, which I can live with, but there's two areas where it's really bad. The first one is to the left of the screen close to where the vent is. It's as big as three eighths of an inch in some places. And that's kind of bad. And you can see it fairly clearly from where you are as a driver. Um, the other really, really bad one is actually to the very left of the car. Again, I have my doors off, so it's a lot easier to see. So you can see there's a massive inch wide gap, which is absolutely horrible. It seems like the dash was manufactured too short to properly actually connect to it. And even the two clips are the wrong sizes. Okay, um, after we've talked about that, let's turn on the unit and quickly run through a couple of things. Radio works quality wise, it sounds fine to me, but of course there's no Sirius XM, which I never use anyway. I can confirm GPS does work also, GPS and GLONASS. There's a setting in the settings menu where you can see if GPS does work. I can confirm that the steering wheel controls do work out of the box. They are plug and play, which is a good thing. The not so good thing that I did confirm with the manufacturer is that you cannot remap the buttons to whatever you want because the uh, CAN bus unit that they provided is only good for basically replicating whatever it has right now. Finally, let's talk about the audio. 
I'm very happy because it's actually plug and play with the Alpine. You know those two plugs where I wasn't sure which one was factory and which one was Alpine? Well, I tested both and one of them is actually for the Alpine. Um, it's again plug and play. It gets lots of heavy bass, actually heavier than the Uconnect system. And I can control fade, which is actually pretty awesome. Again, I've read on the Wrangler forums that the audio sounds better on these Android head units, especially the Join, than the original Uconnect unit. But again, I can't tell a huge difference. Again, I will say that the bass is heavier on the Join than the Uconnect, and it's actually um, less head poundy, if you get what I mean. Um, what I did is I recorded the same song with the same microphone in the exact same place with both the original Uconnect and the new Join. So listen to both and judge for yourself. All right, so that's it for today. It took me about three to four hours to actually do the install because I had to set up the camera for filming. But if you don't have to set up the camera for filming, it'll take you about 80 minutes, which is what I said at the beginning of the video. I'll be making another video with the full features of the Android head unit itself. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.